now let's get into the financial statements okay if you have understood all the concepts explained from the beginning till this point trust me financial statements is just a cakewalk for you it is very easy to comprehend if you have stayed so far if you have understood the concepts that i have been explaining so far so what is the purpose of the financial statements the purpose is to provide information about the financial performance of the company all the registered companies are required to produce financial statements and they get audited by government agencies as and when needed any long term investor planning to invest in the stocks of the company will look into the financial statements and with the help of financial statements he will make an informed decision about his or her investment there are many financial statements okay but primarily the important ones are as below profit and loss account which is also known as income statement balance sheet cash flow statements so let's start with profit and loss account profit and loss account is also referred to as pnl account so let's see what is a profit and loss account okay it is there in the name itself we prepare the profit and loss account to know the net profit of the company or the net loss of the company please note the trading or the manufacturing firms will prepare the trading account and profit and loss account together within one account itself and they just call this as trading and pnl account okay so but for the firms that do not prepare the trading account are not manufacturing firms they would only work on the profit and loss account so there are two reasons to prepare a pnl statement okay one reason is it tells whether the organization is making money and it is a valuable tool to monitor operations companies usually prepare a quarterly pnl account apart from the ones which they usually make at the end of the accounting period right the profit and loss statements also allows outsiders to evaluate the firm's ability to generate profits and manage its resources so pnl statement is a very important statement it is also referred to as popularly income statement and sometimes in some places this is also referred to as statement of operations income statement is a multiple formatted statement which is nothing but coming up with various subtotals or sub amounts of income leading to net income or net losses what i mean by multiple formatted statement is if you see on the screen we have revenues column under that we have sales and sales returns and interest received and the totals and again underneath expenses and the details and the totals so when i say multi formatted it is a whole table divided into multiple formats and their subtotals this is just a small sample for easy understanding of the concept but when it comes to big companies usually the pnl statements may be a page long statement okay so let me show you how to calculate the profit and loss account okay in fact we already have looked into it in the elements of accounting section where we discuss about process to derive net income but let's touch base it again if you take the net sales revenue and deduct the costs of goods sold we get gross profit and then we add other income minus other expenses minus operating expenses to gross profit and we get something called ebitda so this is the formula so gross profit minus operating expenses plus other income minus other expenses okay you get ebitda which is earnings before interest taxes depreciation and amortization okay now if we remove depreciation and amortization we get something called ebit and if we remove interests and taxes from ebit we get net income this is our profit and loss account so what happens is when you get your net income for the current year company itself would divide the profit by the number of shares the company has and it will tell what is the earning per share by the way some of the investors will look out for earnings per share okay you want to know how much equity income the company is generating in the form of net income so they use this trick called eps earnings per share just to know that how the company is performing all right so now let's look at what is balance sheet in simple terms if you remember from the conversation on the elements of accounting while discussing the assets we discussed about the equation between assets 
liabilities and equity. So the equation is assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. What balance sheet shows is the total of assets value and the total of liabilities value and the totals of shareholder equity values. And it then shows the value that has been derived for the assets is equal to the value of liabilities and the value of equity. Now, if someone asks us what a balance sheet is, we can simply say a balance sheet shows the financial position of the company. It tells us what is the value of the assets of a firm and what are the liabilities of the firm and what is the shareholders equity of the firm. Now let's see an example how the balance sheet looks like. I have drawn a sample balance sheet that you can see on the screen. In this picture, we see that the details of all the assets are given. Likewise, we have the details of all the liabilities and also the shareholders equity. Okay, you may see the word called capital stock. Capital stock is nothing but the shares of owners that have been issued by the company. Okay, now retained earnings, as we've discussed earlier in the elements of accounting, is the dividends that were not distributed to the shareholders in the previous years, okay, in the past years. So in this table, the assets are matched with the liabilities and the shareholders equity, and we are good. That is all about balance sheet. Now let's look at the other financial statement, which is statement of cash flow. Statement of cash flow is nothing but knowing where the cash has come from for the company and where and how it was spent by the company. Let's be clear. We have profits. Profits is not cash. What we're not talking about profits here. We're talking about just the cash. How much of a cash that the company has gotten and where was it spent and how was it spent. Income statement, which is a profit and loss account, does not clearly tell us how much cash have we received and how much cash was spent and how it was spent. But it only tells us how much income we generated. Okay. Think like this profit and loss account tells us about the income generated and the cash flow statement tells about the liquidity position of the firm, the liquidity generating capacity of the firm. Why is it important to generate this cash flow statement? The cash flow statements provide a glimpse as to how well a company generates cash to fund its operating expenses and it also gives a clear indication to the stakeholders about the liquidity position of the firm. The more the liquidity, the more confidence in the firm. So what do we do is in the cash flow statement, we list out all the details of the cash, where the cash has come from and where the cash has gone to. Okay. Cash flow statements are usually and broadly summarized into three categories. Okay. Cash flow from operational activities, cash flow relating to investing activities and cash flows relating to financial activities. Cash flow from operational activities includes revenues and operating expenses only for which company received the cash flow. Sometimes the sales are done on the basis of credit. We will not include the sales which are done on the basis of credit. Similarly, if the company has made any purchases on the basis of credit, it will not be considered. Only those things on which the sales are done on cash purchases are done in cash we take that into consideration okay now let's look at cash flows relating to investing activities like purchasing properties plants equipments it should also include any property plant equipment that was sold for cash okay or bought for cash all right and finally we have cash flows relating to financing activities these activities include all the activities except for operating activities and investing activities. If I have to give an example, activities like buying the shares of the company back or paying dividends to shareholders or issuing new shares for money and also taking debt or repaying debt. These are some of the activities that fall under the category of financing activities. So once you categorize them separately, you would take the net cash from operating activities you would take the net cash from investing activities and you take the net cash from financing activities and sum them up. And then you would finally get the net cash movement for the accounting period. If it is not clear, do not worry. Let me explain it here. 
So if you look at the screen, the cash flow statement was categorized into three statements and all the related transactions are mentioned under their respective categories. Then we calculated the net cash flow statement for each category. And at the end of the screen, we added all the net cash flow statements. Usually companies give a comparison of the net cash flow statements for year on year basis to see how a company is doing in terms of its cash position. And one thing you can observe carefully is the ending cash flow for each year is becoming the beginning cash flow for next year. This is about the cash flow statement. Hope this is clear. If we quickly recap the accounting process section, we've gone through a lot of subject here, okay, from basics to advanced. We started identifying the transactions and we've learned about journals, what they meant and how to record entries in the journal books. And we also looked at the rules to record entries in the journals. Then we looked at the ledger account in which we understood what a ledger account is, with a few examples. And then we looked at how to do a trial balance to match the totals of credits with totals of debits. And then we also looked at the trading account concepts and details. And then we moved on to the three financial statements, which are income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. We discussed about their importance and how to generate the statements and the examples of them. So this completes our accounting basics tutorial. Now this is the overview of what we've learned so far. If you made this far, I want to Thank you for your support and I hope you learned something important which is going to be very valuable for you from the accounting's perspective. As well as if you want to read a financial statement of the company, you should be able to read it now and understand what they are capturing there and why they are capturing there. And a small note before you leave, it took about three months of effort to make this video. If you like this video, please give me a like please do subscribe and I do have very few subscribers and it would be a privilege to have you as one of my subscribers. If you could share this video with your friends and peers, it would help them to learn the subject as well as it would help this video show up in the first page of searches and wish you all the very best for your future. God bless. Bye.